But at the end of the day, what you're really looking for is fulfillment. What you're really looking for is satisfaction. What you're looking for is alignment. And most of it is between your freaking ears. And in order for you to get to where you want to go, it doesn't require you to be a multi-bazillionaire. It doesn't require you to have the top of the food chain type of thing. What it means is you give yourself permission to be you. What do you want? That's the element of success. Welcome to Evolve Leadership, the arena where high achieving leaders are challenged to redefine their limits. My name is Angus Nelson. I grew up in the United States and I now live in Lisbon, Portugal. I'm an executive coach and I've spent my career advising and training leaders from startups to Fortune 500 companies. And here's what I've learned. An old, ineffective leadership framework will always keep you on a hamster wheel, consumed with work-life balance, burnout, and stress. Here on the show, each week we'll help you rethink the path to achievement. We'll help you discover new principles, new philosophies to the modern leader. Look, the world is relentlessly changing, demanding a new era of leaders. It's time to redefine your limits. So enter the arena, my friend. It's time to evolve. Welcome to the Evolve Leadership Show. My name is Tim McClagan. I'm the senior coach here at Evolve. Angus, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I, uh, for you know, the timing of this, I don't want to give it away and date it, but we just had Halloween here in Lisbon, which is mm-hmm. not that big of a thing. Like there, yeah. you you don't take your kids door to door, you know, trick or treating in Portugal. Yeah. However, there's tons of like you know, parties and stuff like that. People getting dressed up for the parties, mostly expats. Uh, And there was a small parade I heard about. I didn't see it. I heard about like some people, like, I don't know, 60 people like walked down the road all in their costume stuff. We went to a party uh, of some friends and had a great time. I got in this little like soldier's little outfit with a little cigar in my mouth. And uh, we celebrated a holiday that for whatever reason, like, it's so nostalgic. And yeah. so that's what we did. And it was a great night. And now today we're feasting on all the sugar hits. Nice. You can tell all the expats in Lisbon then by the one who dress up in crazy costumes on October 31st. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that's pretty darn close. It's not, <laughs> not altogether wrong. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Angus, today we're talking about a concept that I got to be honest, sometimes in the personal development space, you'll hear a concept and it won't quite register the first time. And I remember hearing this concept a while back and I remember hearing it and going, oh yeah, that sounds good. But it didn't really click until I heard it again and then again. And that is this topic of permission. And Mm -hmm. we had back in episode 84, we were uh, giving an inside look at a client call with one of our Mm -hmm. clients, Derek Jensen. He's an amazing, amazing dude. And he had this, this epiphany based on permission. And we just wanted to take a second and do a deep dive on that. Because sometimes if you don't unpack it, a concept like that can just go over your head. And really, it's one of the most powerful uh, tools for a lot of our members and a lot of Mm -hmm. leaders when they discover it. Absolutely. And the fact that it is and, 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 you know, there are some subjects, some elements, some some constructs that Mm -hmm. we teach. You know, the saying goes, some things are taught, other things are caught. Yeah. And this is one of those that you kind of have to catch it, right? You have to like wrap your brain around what are the elements that, that this relates to. And so this powerful concept is, it affects so many areas of our lives. It can be your business, your relationships, your money, your health, so many different areas when you understand that this is one of the unlocks to our lives. So first, of all, I'll, I'll give you some backstory. It's just as an example. <clears throat> My, for those of you who have heard before, you already know the story. For those that you're new, my first business, uh, I made some financial mistakes. We put on a music festival. Train was the headliner, and thunder showers came in. I needed four thousand people to show up, and only fourteen hundred showed up. We lost seventy-two thousand dollars in one weekend. For our Ouch. small organization, that was a lot. I didn't know how to ask for help. I didn't know how to delegate. 
I went into a spiral where I was working these crazy amount of hours, fell into addiction. It was porn and then alcohol, and then I started sleeping around. In short order, I blew up my marriage, I blew up my business, I blew up my sense of self. So I was carrying a ton of shame. Now, obviously, since then, I got into counseling, learned all these things about human behavior, psychology, and started to you know grow on, on so many levels. But those levels of growth only came because I was able to let go, and we're going to talk about this more on the show, of different limiting beliefs, different areas wow. of shame, different stories I told myself, different beliefs I believed about me or my place in the world. Yeah. And one of the things that I learned in my counseling was this concept of permission. Hmm. And my, my counselor, he challenged me as, will you give yourself permission to be? And then fill in the blank. And this was transformational in my life because the things that I thought were, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve, yeah. uh, I don't have what it takes. And these are elements that so many of our clients and our members are you know, experiencing. They've shared with us time and time again. And if we start to look at it from that perspective, then what if you believe the opposite, that I gave myself permission that I am worthy, that I do deserve, that I do have what it takes? So now, all of a sudden, if you get to that place where we are accepted, that we um, are, are belonging, that we have what it takes, that we are deserving, we are all these different things, it's like like Superman coming out of, you know, Clark Kent's, you know, suit and tie. Because yeah. in that permission gives possibility. That's the rub. And most people don't ever give themselves permission. They stay in those ruts. They stay in those cycles. They stay in those typical habits and behaviors they've always done. And now they're stuck with what they accept. They're stuck with what they tolerate. They're stuck with what they settle for. Wow. And permission is the gateway to get you beyond that. So until you give yourself permission to experience something else, you're going to be in that place of the same old merry-go-round, going around and around over and over again. And yet, you know, like the definition of insanity, you're expecting different results. Mm -hmm. So I want to break it down to just this kind of framework to help you understand both two things. One is <clears throat> how this permission thing kind of unpacks itself and then second of all a little bit of framework for how we work with the 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 clients that we do and it comes down to this number one is when you get to that point of you're sick and tired of being sick and tired when you get to that point where it's like i'm going to do something different yeah the question i always start off with i call it the spice girl principle tell me what you want what you really really want and the basis <laughs> of that is what do you want to create yeah. Like, what's this life you're trying to create? What's this business you're trying to create? What's this, you know, element of your finances or your marriage or your relationship with your kids, your lifestyle? What do you want to create? Mm. And then the second piece of that is what is your level of commitment to create it? How are you going to show up for yourself? How are you going to choose to change, choose something different? Or as we are saying here, give yourself permission to the possibility. And then that brings us to the third piece, which is who must you be in order to achieve it? And this is where the real transformation starts. So all of this without you know going in any more deeper, I'll pause there and turn things over to you, Tim, because in this, in giving yourself permission, gives yourself possibility. Yeah. And what's interesting is, and I remember the first time I heard this, I thought, I'm not, you know, of course, I can give myself permission to succeed. But what it really is, is permission to let go of the things that are holding us back, right? There are stories we've told ourselves. We've had, like yourself, you had a past failure with shame. And then next time something starts looking like that thing, right? It goes, oh, here it comes all over again. Yeah. And we basically sabotage these amazing opportunities because of these stories that hold us back. And we need to give ourselves permission to let go of those and step to that nevel, next uh, level of success. And so what I want to do is take a look at some of these internal barriers and these self-limiting beliefs um, yep. that really keep us from pursuing the life personally we want with our relationships and then also professionally and then internally. 
And, uh, and so I want to take a look at five mental barriers that hold us back and really be able to give ourselves permission to let go of those old barriers and step in to the first one. And Angus, the first one here is letting go of external validation. Talk to that for me. Well, shoot, from a long, young age, so many of us, especially if you're a high performer, you're you know someone who is really striving to make a mark in the world, oftentimes that's coming from a place where you are striving for an external validation. Yeah. There is this element that you need someone to give you a pat on the back and add a boy or to be perceived or seen as some kind of expertise, as some kind of, you know, uh, appearance, as some kind of power. Yeah. And whether it's your, coming from your parents or a teacher or your peers, your society at large, so many times our life like caught one of these little situations, a, a, an occurrence in life, and it triggered something in our brain that says, aha, this is how I can feel good about what I'm doing. Oh, this is how yeah. I can get attention for what I've done. This is how I can feel better. Like all this stuff is external. Mm -hmm. And much of our society faces their whole life based on external validation. I mean, this is why social media for a lot of young people is so dangerous because they can build a whole life based on what other people see or say uh -huh. about them. Right. Yeah. So when you think about, you know, when you were younger, you know, and you're growing up is like, hey, um, you know, what about if I, you know, make everybody laugh and they go, ah, you're so funny, Angus. And you're like, oh, yeah. if I keep making people laugh, then they'll like me. Right. But then there's these other areas where it's like you need to be chosen. So mm. in school, you raise your hand and maybe four or five people have their hands raised to rise, raise it, to answer a question. And then a, you are the one that gets picked of those five people to answer the question. And you're like, yeah, she picked me. He picked me, blah, 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 blah. Like I yeah. have an external validation. Or if you give the right answer and like, oh, great answer, Angus, you're so smart. Oh, see, see, it's feeding all of this external validation that I'm worthy, that I deserve, blah, blah, blah. I have what it takes. All the different principles that we talked about at the beginning of the show. Yeah. So over time, this can lead to a dependency mm. of these external pieces. You get into dating. I just need somebody to, to love me. I just need somebody to make me happy. I just need somebody to choose me. Mm. We get into workplace and now we do that with our bosses or with our team, or with our found, or with our uh, financiers, you know, the venture capital, or our yeah. board. And we're constantly in a performance mode, trying to make everybody happy so that we can feel happy about ourselves. This is the danger of external validation. And we need yeah. to let go of that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at, uh, there was a study by uh, Cornell University and they found that people significantly overvalue the opinions and perspectives of others, oh, even to their so detriment. Uh, and how many people uh, do we all know, right? That yeah. experience that. And it's so true. And I think the big, the big crisis comes when you have been picked, right? You got into mm. the good school, you got into the good job, you've experienced that success. And then all of a sudden there's a setback, right? You got mm -hmm. laid off or, you know, your, your role switched or you're no longer the favorite mm -hmm. uh, employee or you started the business, everything you touched turned to gold and then you hit a down cycle. Yeah. And so what I, if we're dependent on our external, we're always a victim to their approval. Right. We're mm -hmm. dependent on their approval. But when we can switch and give ourselves permission to change from external validation to internal validation, knowing mm -hmm. that I know I have what it takes, it, we, we're not dependent on our spouse to give us that. Right. We can actually right. love them <laughs> unconditionally or, or have this not a self-serving leeching, you know, type of relationship. We can actually that have bias. a giving <laughs> We can have yeah. an, you know, two people trying to outgive each other and, and love each other. Uh, we're not like codependent. 
And when we can give ourselves permission to give our own validation, man, it's a game changer, Angus. Because yeah. how many of how many of our friends have been driven in life? I mean, some of the most driven people I know yeah. are trying to prove somebody wrong, trying to get that validation from their you know, dad that said they, you know, wouldn't do anything or the mom that always disapproved of their career choice or, and even, I mean, some of those people are dead already and they're still yeah. trying to prove them wrong. And if our dependence, if our, our sense of self is dependent on external validations, we're setting ourselves up for failure, aren't we? Well, for sure. And I'm guilty of it. I, even when I got into my professional life, outside of all the, the the baggage that I carried from my shame and my pain in my past, now it's I'm trying to make up for it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to compensate. See, see, I'm not that guy anymore. See, see, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a valuable citizen, you know, a valuable piece of society. <laughs> Look what I can do. And so I went into nonprofit, mm. you know, to, to like, in some form, it was almost like I was paying penance. I was limiting my cash flow and what was possible for my salary. I was sabotaging other opportunities and didn't even realize it. Yeah. But when I got to that point where I finally said, you know what, I'm doing this to myself. And I gave myself permission to step into some arena that maybe felt scary, maybe felt intimidating. Maybe it felt like I didn't belong in that season or in that time. Yeah. And yet, that permission created possibility. There's another piece of this that, um, that I think we're kind of hinting on, and that's this element of self-limiting beliefs. Yeah, absolutely. How's that played out for you? Yeah, and so these are beliefs that in some way or another, we have come to where, oh, I'm not good at X, or we've, we've, I've tried that and I've experienced whatever. And we create these levels in our mind of, you know, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm, I don't deserve success. Others are better equipped to succeed than I am. And if these are stories that we've told ourselves, it, it's this fixed mindset where we can't grow past where we already are. It's like, I either got it or I don't. And that's just a myth, Angus. Like our brains were meant to continually learn, continually develop. They are so malleable. I'm always inspired when I see somebody, uh, especially later in life, take on even a career shift or a new hobby or just something that is, is deliberately challenging them. I'm moving to Portugal and I think when I first came up with, okay, I gotta learn European Portuguese, right? <laughs> not, not Brazilian Portuguese, European Portuguese. My first reaction, honestly, was I don't want to do it because I it, it's going to be too hard. It's going to be, you know, maybe I'll just find the spots in, you know, Lisbon that are friendly to English speakers. And that I, that's a cop out. Right. If you're going to move to a place, you learn, you, you, you come with a growth mindset. And when I started shifting my thinking towards that, I said, you know what? So much is going to be expanded for me and my family to learn a new language, to experience it together. My mind itself, you know, is going to be open. And then it became fun. Then it became what new thing can I learn? And so it's really becoming uh, taking these limiting beliefs that hold us back and actually giving ourselves permission to let go of them and say, you know what? That's just a story. And when we can call it out as a story, everything changes, right? Because it's not reality. It's just a story, right? Yeah, even in that uh, interview that we did, or interview, it was just the, the coaching call that we did with Derek, you know, several, what was it, 80, episode 84. Yeah. And he's like, man, when I think about a lot of my beliefs, they're all pretty stupid, pretty dumb. And I said to him, <laughs> like, for all of us, most of our limiting beliefs are actually pretty dumb, but we've never been objective, been able to stand back, become self-aware or, you know, have the emotional intelligence to be able to say, maybe I could look at this from a different direction. You know, some of those limiting beliefs might even be like, oh, I've led a team of 10. I don't think I can lead a team of 20. Mm. You know, I talk to founders all the time. I've got one founder that I worked with who, you know, when the company was a certain size, everything was cool and copacetic. He's a, a co-founder of this company. Yeah. And then it goes up to a unicorn status mm. and he's still operating 
as if he was an operator. Yeah. Like he's operating as, as a doer. Mm. And so he's in the weeds and he's, you know, in, involved in a lot of this, the, the, the stuff that, that's going on. And one of the things I told him, you know, a rule here at Evolve Leadership is that leadership is about being a decider, not a doer. You mm. have to learn to delegate. You're no longer just managing the monkeys. Now you're in this place of strategy, a place of vision and a place of coaching. Like this is your role. And his shift of letting go of that was when he finally gave himself permission, like, maybe I can actually be a leader, yeah. not just a laborer. That was yeah. so liberating to him. I ran into him just the other night, and he was just saying how things are so different. I like, these that. are the things that in our worlds, they're more common than we even realize. Mm. I was talking with one of, my, uh, one of our members uh, earlier today. And he was talking about uh, this thought of him leaving this company that he's currently at where he's, he knows all the things, he's doing well, but he's later in his career and he can go work for either one of the companies he used to work for, this massive corporations, or he could go you know, try something else at a different place. And it dawned on him this week and he's like, but you know what, I don't wanna do all of this for the rest of my life. I probably have a good mm. five years to where I want to return. Or I want to retire or that I could retire. And we've already had conversations like, dude, you're not the kind that will retire. You may yeah. not be working for a quote unquote, you know, company, but you're still going to keep busy because that's just kind of who you are. You've got to keep something going to stay free in your mind and stay, you know, productive, contributing and meaningful. Right. Yeah. And he came up with this idea. It's like, well, what if I started writing? and start positioning myself in some sort of thought leadership and I could do speaking, I can do that for the rest of my life. Yeah. And what if I don't have to leave this job because I know this job so well, I can put it in, a, in, in kind of a package where I can be as productive, not more productive, but I can be intentional about what I do, say no to things I don't want to do, and then start building this, constant this, this construct of what he wants to do next yeah and the the sense of relief and liberation when he's like i could do that yeah he gave himself permission let me just pause for a second to say this there is one trait that you will find in every successful leader no matter their industry no matter their role and that trait is action. And we want to inspire ambitious leaders like you to bet on yourself and take action on those audacious goals that you see in your heart. That's why we created our 90 day accelerator. It's a results driven battle tested framework designed specifically for high performing leaders like you to get unstuck and propel you towards your goals. And in just 90 days, you won't even recognize a person you used to be. To be a part of this elite community, go to evolveleadership.org. Now, back to the show. It's permission to let go of external validation, permission to let go of self-limiting beliefs. This next one is really similar. It's permission to let go of fear and choose to take risk, right? Because mm. especially like a lot of the scenarios you're talking about, there's a shift where we're, we're sensing a shift career uh, relationship. There's a shift going on. And the question I like, do I have what it takes? Right? Mm. Yeah. I can run a company at X, but can I take it to the next level? You know, I've been single mm -hmm. and happy all my life and now things are getting serious. You know, can I be that yeah. married man, that married woman, you know, whatever is the, the blockade in our mind, there's fear that comes up. Mm -hmm. And risk, because we're afraid of losing, especially if we've had success. We're afraid of losing our success. And yet, if you're listening in the car, if you're listening on the subway, if you're walking the dog, the best leaders are always evolving. And if you build that evolve muscle, then you're always going to be growing. That's going to be yeah. one of your strengths is you can take on that next risk. You can let go and give yourself permission to let yeah. go of fear and angus i'd love to hear your perspective on letting go of fear because it's probably 
one of the biggest things subconsciously that's down below. Like a lot of times we don't realize that the real motivation, why we don't want to step out and do something, why we don't want to make a you know decision, it's really rooted somewhere and we're either afraid to look bad, afraid to lose what we yeah. got. Talk about that for a little bit. There is terminology that we give the fear of failure. Mm. There's also a fear of judgment. There's imposter syndrome. There's, like you said, you get a modem of success and it's like, can I keep being successful? Can, maybe I'm going to screw this up. Maybe I'm going to risk it all. And then now I lose it all. And one of the elements of this is understanding that fear, it's irrational. Fear is not a rational sense making emotion. And it's oftentimes built on stories or expectations that you in and of yourself have created. And it's not to say that there's not, you know, a challenge of things going wrong or, you know, economies changing or the business could go sideways. Yeah, all those things are a part of it. But risk can still be risk even when it's mitigated. And so when we step into these new arenas, whether it's this new role, it's stepping out, starting your own company, it's stepping into all these different components, all of it's based on will you give yourself permission? I could figure out that last thing I did. Maybe I can figure this one out too. All of a sudden things start shifting. They shift when you give yourself permission because first you acknowledge like, oh my gosh, this is freaking me out. I talked with... Uh, a client this week that was saying they want to make some moves on some stuff, but they're processing all that. Like, what would that mean to me and my family? What would that mean to my current, you know, catalog or, you know, cadre of business uh, businesses that I'm currently running? And the question was, but what do you want? What do you want to create? And is this decision you're making moving you towards the creation? Because if you said you're committed to this thing you want to create, then making this next decision is just a next natural step in the process. And suddenly it's like, I just have to give myself permission to take that step. And I was like, I feel what you're saying. I, I feel looking at you and your, your you know, nonverbals of your body that you're experiencing this element of, uh, of, it sounds like, you know, hesitation and fear. Is there a possibility that you're just experiencing resistance? And what does that look like? Because resistance is often all the old stories, all the old beliefs that have kind of mounted up. And now you're feeling the resistance. And I would tell you resistance is what's necessary for altitude in every plane. Mm. And what if you're that jet and you're just giving yourself altitude by leaning into the resistance? That's permission. You know, one of my favorite stories of pushing through fear, Angus, was uh, a single mother, had a failed marriage, uh, had a daughter, moved to from Porto, Portugal, to Edinburgh, Scotland, and was just trying to make a career for herself and wanted to write. And so she'd be in the cafes in Edinburgh with her daughter sleeping on her lap while she's just trying to write. And she got rejected over and over and over. And yet she gave herself permission to push through the fear, push through the fear of failure or rejection or what would people think or, you know, whatever relatives are saying, get a real job or all this stuff. And she pushed through that. And it not only transformed her life, it transformed literary history because she wrote a little known series uh, called Harry Potter, right? And she, J.K. Rowling pushed through, gave herself permission, and then all of a sudden seeing those failures as just, nope, the next one's coming, the next one's coming, learn from it with a growth mindset. And then she experienced this powerful life that not only transformed her life, we were talking about Halloween. I, we had a whole bunch of little Harry Potters running around our neighborhood the other day. It transformed culture. And that is the, the, the power of letting go of fear. One of my favorite quotes is from philosopher George Adair. And he says, everything you ever wanted 
is on the other side of fear. Isn't that true? 100%. You know, so now we've covered external validation. We talked about self-limiting beliefs. We've talked about the fear and, you know, risk. And then this next piece is, you know, this part that I talked about at the top of the show is worthiness, Mm. right? Feeling like you're worthy. And that worthy can be like, do I deserve this? Do, should, have, I, er, have I worked hard enough? Have I done enough? Like there's this piece of us when, especially if you own your own business or you're a new founder or whatever and you get funded or you make a sale, like the more money that that venture capital gives you or private equity or your, your customer, the harder you work because you feel on some level you've got to perform to the dollar amount that they've given you, right? (laughs) right. Because they're like, I'm not worthy of that much. So now all of a sudden you're like, work yourself to the bone, work yourself literally to death yeah. because of that amount of money that you think, oh my gosh, I really have to exchange my time for the value of that cash. And these are elements that show up in so many areas of our lives. You know, until you give yourself permission to have the self-worth to know that you're enough to give yourself permission to give yourself the the compassion the self-love that you can be healthy and have a good mental state good mental being simply because you understand that you're worthy that you are enough just like you are yeah it was Vincent van Gogh, that despite all of his talent, despite all of, you know, the the things that he had done, and he was only able to sell just a few paintings in his entire lifetime, lifetime, because he didn't think he was worthy. He didn't think that he'd done enough. And how many other celebrities or famous people have taken their lives to some degree because they didn't think they were enough. They didn't deserve all the attention. They didn't deserve all the money. They didn't deserve whatever, like they didn't feel worthy of that. Angus, check this out. Alex Rodriguez, who is my favorite player on my beloved Mariners, was rising star, just shooting up to superstardom. And he came to the end of his contract with the Mariners. uh, And he he just had this incredible trajectory. He became like an insanely, like by far the most highest paid uh, player on the Texas Rangers. And he had a great career from then on, but it was at that moment when he got this massive payday, that's when he decided to take steroids. He said, and he Mm. said it was because I was trying to justify what I had been paid, right? He he was living the dream. He was in, he was clean all the way through until he got that big paycheck. And then he had to sabotage his character, sabotage stuffing and cheat on the game that he loves just because he was trying to be worthy of that. And it's amazing how we can sabotage if we don't think we're worthy. It also shows up when the opposite of that, you know, they get that money and they shut down. Think of all the athletes who got their big payday and their next season was horseshit, right? The person who got promoted to that next role and got that big payday, oh, we're going to move you from this, you know, vice president role to this, you know, SVP, you know, role or even a present role, or you're going to be the general manager or whatever the total, every company is different on their titles, but we're going to take you up to this higher level and we're going to pay you twice as much as what we were paying you before. And they will like shut down. Like we've seen that too, because then some level they don't feel worthy. And this creates all this chaos in our heads. It starts to create all this friction, right? Then there's this last piece, like those who have had a different, a specific role. We had a, um, one of our members who experienced this, where he was at this role in this big corporation. And while he was there, he made some of the best money of his life. He had all the contacts, had all the influence, blah, blah, blah. And then through a course of events, he lost that role. And then the whole rest of his career for the last like decade 
has been trying to climb back up to whatever that thing is he saw in his head. Like if I, if I could just get back to that again. It makes me think of Napoleon Dynamite and Uncle Rico. If I could just put me in a state, if I could just, I could throw that pigskin a quarter mile. If they just, if they just, if they just. And you can live your whole life trying to get back to this other state of your past because that would have proved you are worthy. Or because you were at that role, let's say you had been put into state. Uncle Rico did make it a state but never was able to again. Like if I could just get, these are the things that create these cycles in our lives. They create these belief systems. And until you can give yourself permission to know that you are enough, that you are worthy, like you're going to keep repeating the same stuff over and over again. So true. So true. Angus, the last one here is cultural expectations. And each of us have been brought up in a certain culture, uh, whether it's a a country or even just a a cultural background that we grow up. And there's always, you know, sometimes these cultural norms can be really restrictive and and feel like they're they're pressured. We're trying to live up to certain expectations and part of what we're doing and similar to the, the external validation, right? We're trying to line up. Uh, if you've ever had uh, any parents who you said, you know, you wanted to be an artist and, you know, ah, oh, you know, well, you know, there's all this disapproval. Why? Or the person that says, oh, I'm going to medical school. Wow. Tons of, you know, validation and stuff like that. And it was interesting. There's a study that Pew Research did and it found that almost 80 percent of individuals felt pressured to follow traditional societal types or expectations especially related to career or relationships. And when you can give yourself permission to say, what do I want to create? How can I let go? How can I honor the people in my life without necessarily responding to their expectations? How do I step into that? It can be a powerful thing to move us into the life that we want to design. You and I talk with people every day who have created the light that their parents wanted, or their society wanted, and they are so terribly unhappy and really successful. And so the the, the shift is that what that we call the Spice Girls principle. Like, yeah. what do I want? What do yeah. I want for my life? How can I take what what is here, what I've been given, and how can I design the life that I want to create? And that, my friend, is power, isn't it? And furthermore, that cultural thing could be you grew up in poverty. Mm. Who do you think you are to go to college? Who do you think you are to get that great job? Who do you think you are to make that kind of money? Yeah. And these cultural norms of the family you came under or came up from under may have created some programming, you know, Mm. that make you feel some kind of pressure. Or on the opposite end, you know, you grew up in a family that was super wealthy and everything came easy to you and you were super smart, like you could go and do whatever you want. And then suddenly life slaps you in the face and says, oh, mm, not so much for you. Like, what, what do you what do you what are you doing? There's there's a, oh, gosh, I think the, there's a happiness book. I forgot the name of the book, but something happiness or happiness this. And it talks about how these students who are highly successful at the small schools that they're at valedictorians, salatorians, and then they get to Harvard, they get to Yale, they get to one of these massively, you know, affluent schools And suddenly they're not the smart person in the room anymore. They're not the, 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 the one who everything came easy anymore and how that monkeys with their brain, you know, and now they've got to actually work for it or they've got to whatever. And this takes you to that external validation and all that stuff too. But it can start with, you're trying to fill the shadow of something from your cultural past. And this pressure is causing you to do all these things or to think all these things or to try and behave in some way. And until you can give yourself permission to walk out from under that shadow, to walk out from those expectations, to walk out from the old belief patterns that you may have been prescribed all of your life, 
you'll never actually be able to step into the things you know you're capable, right? And this is where all of this comes down to is when we talk about getting you to this place of high performance, of you know, being a peak performer of optimized state of like all the different whatever things we want to call it. At the end of the day, what you're really looking for is fulfillment. What you're really looking for is satisfaction. What you're looking for is alignment. What you're looking for is congruence in your life. And most of it is between your freaking ears. And in order for you to get to where you want to go, it doesn't require you to be a multi-bazillionaire. It doesn't require you to have the top of the food chain type of thing. It doesn't require you to be like all the things to all the people. What it means is you give yourself permission to be you. Permission to create the life that you want for your belief about what you are capable of that that, that that it feeds your soul that makes you be able to spend the kind of quality time and attention with your spouse or with your kids what do you want that's the element of success what do you want to create maybe what you're trying to create is limited maybe what you're trying to create is being held back and shackled by all the old beliefs, by all the old behaviors, by all the old shame and worthiness of all the different fears and risk, all the different limiting beliefs and external validation, like all the things you've been looking for are right here before you because they're inside you. What if you found out that everything that your life was all built on the Wizard of Oz? You're the one who just clicks your heels and say, there's no place like home, no place like home. Look up, Dorothy. You got everything you always wanted, and it's right here. It never left your presence. And this is the thing that will set you free. When you give yourself permission to believe, I have everything I need. I am enough. And the thought is, if you do that, then you'll just relinquish yourself to just existing. And I would tell you, that's what actually causes you to feel alive and to become the thing that you've been wanting to be. Right? And you can show up in your power. And I I love this. It's you show up in your nothingness. We should have a whole show about the nothingness, but write that sucker down. (laughs) Nothing to gain, nothing to prove, nothing to lose. That's the most powerful person in the room. So true. And it only comes when you can give yourself permission to create, to commit, and to be who you and only you alone know you are capable to be. That's what will set you free. As we wrap up another episode of Evolve Leadership, thank you so much for taking time to invest in you. If there's to be any sustainable growth in your company or even in your relationships, you must grow first. And it's what I love to do for leaders, to help them grow, to challenge their thinking, sharpen self-awareness, to instill an unshakable confidence, and ultimately upgrade their sense of self. And we do this through our proprietary method called Agile EQ+ where we're leveraging agile leadership and emotional intelligence. We provide our signature training for individuals and for businesses, we've designed a unique curriculum for company-wide learning and development. If you'd like to learn more about our training or to schedule a call, you can simply go to evolveleadership.org. And until next time, stay driven, keep climbing, and never stop evolving.